Ladies and gentlemen and ninjas, welcome back upon the African Geekdom with I and I, your boy JP. We're here with another review today. How good to see you again so soon. Today we review a stellar action show, executive produced by a stellar director, Gareth Evans of The Raid Fame. The title of the show is Gangs of London with a stellar cast. Uh, not many familiar faces there. Aside from the lady who played Kathleen Stark on Game of Thrones. So, grab your coffees. And let's figure out if it's worth a piss. You understand what it took to build this city. of losing it. London belongs to us. So, Gangs of London, season two, season two, from the mind of Gareth Evans, the man who brought us The Raid and The Raid 2. Also Apostle on Netflix, a man who's been real quiet uh, for these past few years got his Deathstroke movie taken away from him by WB. I'll be forever mad at that. What a guan wana brothers. Blood clot. Yeah. So, uh, season one, I watched it. Uh, what is it? 2020, 2021 season one. It, honestly, uh, aside from the Gareth Evans, Gareth Evans style action and cinematography, it lacked a bit for me on storytelling, but uh, mainly because I suppose it was all just set up season one. Like, uh, like I said with a lot of these shows, you got to give them a second chance. Because sometimes the writers and the creators, they don't find their footing until the second season. And the second season of Gangs of London was fucking brilliant. Okay. Uh, the only disadvantage I found this season is that uh, Gareth Evans didn't show up to direct any of the episodes. He directed five episodes in the first season, but this season, none at all. He was strictly on as an executive producer, but his fingerprints are all of it. He got a good group of directors, and they made sure to keep in line with what his style is, the action, the uh, gritty, grimy brutal and visceral action that you get from the Indonesian action films. Fatality. And here it was on full display. Not for children, not for the faint of heart. You don't even get this type of shit on Game of Thrones. Fatality. I'm sorry, but you don't. A lot of it felt like a uh, fucking horror movie slasher. So, uh, we, uh, well, what's the story, what's the plot? Look, it's called Gangs of Life. It's about gangs and violence. But you follow like the main family, the Wallaces are back, uh, Billy, Miriam, and you know, Sean died in the last season. And of course our boy Elliot, uh, uh, he's an assassin now for the investors. If you've been following this show, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, uh, Lali is around, as well as Luan. And I must say, Luan was the MVP for me this season. Uh, which is something that's carried over from last season. Uh, Luan is a fucking cockroach. You can't kill this guy. Uh, the minute you try, he goes into fucking berserker mode. And, uh, but of course, uh, <laughs> with this show, nobody's safe. So I, I can't, I'm not going to tell you who dies and who doesn't. But boy, Luan really comes close to it so many times. And... I can't tell you here if he survives everything. I'm not going to do that. But his fight sequences, once he's in that berserker mode, oh, they are <laughs> uh, goddamn glory to see. Fatality. So, uh, the actor play, playing Elliot, I really hope this guy gets uh, more of this, more roles of this. But um, I don't really hear a lot of people talking about this show. It really underrated and maybe on this channel I'm a champion of the underrated shows because I fucking love this season uh like I said season one not that good but there were nuggets of greatness in it and I know because of the pedigree of Gareth Evans that maybe they had not 
just not found their footing yet and I was right god damn it vindicated this season a fucking diamond covered in blood a blood diamond so and uh, yeah I uh, could tell you about the paper tint so picked up last time the Wallaces lost their power from season one they lost their place in the city now they're trying to claw their way back into the city and it has been run by a new guy, Georgian faction, Koba, not Koba from <laughs> Planet of the Apes, but bleach blonde Koba. Uh, the character of Koba, while well written, fits the role, but I believe was poor, in my opinion, was poorly cast. Uh, I do, the uh, the actor playing Koba was barely threatening. He made these long speeches you know and you know threaten people's lives but he, he didn't fit the role to me uh, maybe he needs somebody better for that but oh maybe that's the point because uh from season one i didn't really like luan but with him that was the point uh to be unthreatening and unassuming but then to lose his shit when you back him into a corner mvp luan yeah and oof, my other mvp actually would be lale who is the star of my favorite episode, episode six, when she's uh, trying to get out of some shit and she's the last man standing. She got her die hard episode. <laughs> she's barefoot running around to a building with a bunch of guys trying to kill her and it does uh, commits a lot of fucking murder. A lot of fucking murder. Fatality. Yeah, man. This, the choreography, choreography in this show. And of course, Sorry to mention see, this and see uh, some of the best action choreography on TV today. Yes, some of the best action choreography you'll get on TV today out of anything. I, don't, I never pegged myself as an action movie fan or an action fan, but I guess I am now because I'm really looking at these things with a different eye now and they look great. The carnage, the bloody carnage is brilliant. Um, a far cry from what we're getting from the Marvel TV shows with all these clean cut, like well stylized, well choreographed uh, uh, action piece, set pieces, where apparently you never allowed to hit a woman. I don't fucking get that. And oh boy, if there's a female character in this show in a fight, they really gotta earn that victory. They, 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 they take the pain. Well, everybody suffers here, yeah, man. Shit. The female characters in this take more hits than the female characters in C. Honest to gods. Honest to the gods. I swear. The star, this, this great writing all around. All the performances except for Koba's, uh, they, they're great. And the drama, the, the character, character interactions, nothing felt off or no characters acting like out of character everything was pretty in line in, in what they've been established to be as from day one from episode one if you will especially luan my man luan uh he got the blackest attitude out of a white man i've ever seen he got this fuck this shit attitude i ain't down for this shit he getting the fuck out <laughs> but he has his priorities so he sticks to them, sticks to his principles. But like I said, the, the real star of the show is the action choreography. Stay for that. Stay for that. I'm looking forward for season three. There's some great setup for next season. I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, all of our players have been moved on the board to their individual side. Some of them are together. We, there's a lot of betrayal going on in this thing. It is the modern day Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones that takes place in the modern day. London being the setting, not Westeros. But Westeros does stand in for London, I guess. Mm, I don't know. I'm just a guy who reviews movies on YouTube. Gangs of London, season two. Strong fucking recommend. I will give this a. Uh, I love that I'm, I can give it a 9 out of 10 reels for real fam 9 out of 10 reels for real 
and uh, on my shaggy scale i give this a mr bombastic mr bombastic i can't be happier to say this about a show that there's so much love attention and care to detail put into it true that so as per usual this has been me your boy jp may the force be with you live long and prosper may the odds be ever in your favor we'll come forever my ninjas and i'll catch you on the net one drink your coffees